The Biden campaign is reaching out to Latino voters in battleground states during the Copa America soccer tournament, which starts today. It unveiled a new seven-figure ad buy that the campaign is using to try to win over this key voting bloc. Four years ago, we were shut down. Stadiums were empty. Trump failed us. But then Joe Biden took over. He reopened the country and got us back on track. Lauren Egan and Josh Wingrove join us now. Lauren is White House reporter for Politico, and Josh is White House reporter for Bloomberg News. White House reporters, welcome. No Thank better you. people Thanks to talk us. about this with. Okay, so that ad, uh, it's not as if Biden's trying to win over soccer players, right? But it's notable that they're playing it in that kind of, um, you know, to that audience. We have seen, you know, Donald Trump make gains among Latino voters for both of you. I mean, how does this signal how the Biden campaign is concerned about these numbers and what they're trying to do to address this group? Yeah, I, I think this ad's fascinating. Um, what's especially interesting to me about it is that they didn't lean into issues like immigration in this ad. Mm. They really went hard on an economic message. That mm -hmm. ad, you know, goes back to uh, COVID 2020. Mm -hmm. The same tournament obviously was delayed in 2020 due to yeah. COVID. Um, and I think what we're seeing from the campaign is a signal that they recognize that this this campaign is really shaping up to be about the economy, mm -hmm. um, no matter who you are, no matter what voting block you're a part of. Uh, and I think we're mm -hmm. going to see that more for them, um, for Latino voters, black voters, all these groups that we've seen that have kind mm -hmm. of um, been shying away from the Biden campaign a bit more. Yeah. And Josh, what about that kind of economic pitch to this particular group? Yeah, we've seen in some polls that people really have a sort of rose-colored view of what Trump was. They kind of credit him for the first three years of the mm -hmm. economy, right? And Biden's yeah. campaign has been flailing its hands in any way they can to try to say, hey, remember the shutdowns that was on mm -hmm. Trump's watch and the explosion mm -hmm. of COVID was on Trump's watch. They want mm -hmm. credit for turning things around. And so this mm -hmm. is plugging into that theme. Yeah. You know, there's an electoral college map angle to this as well. Mm -hmm. Nevada and Arizona have two of the highest concentrations mm -hmm. of Latino voters. Uh, those are you know, tough states right now. Donald Trump has never won Nevada right. and is now in most polls, including Bloomberg's poll, leading Biden in that state. Mm -hmm. um, so right now they're sort of trying to batten down the hatches. The flip side to this, though, that is scrambling mm -hmm. this. And every call we make, it seems you get a different answer, mm -hmm. which is that is, if Trump makes gains in Latinos, it's changing the question of how many points does Biden need to win by to win the Electoral College? Mm. Four years ago, we thought it was like three or four points. Mm -hmm. And now Biden, Biden maybe doesn't need to win by three or four points. He might mm. need to win by two or three because the vote shift, the vote composition, excuse me, is shifting. Mm -hmm. So lots of moving parts on this one. But right yeah. now, uh, a lot of Democrats think ultimately they can speak to uh, all voters, including mm -hmm. Latino voters, on the mm -hmm. economy, try to tell Biden's story and mm -hmm. stop or at least, uh, you know, reverse what has been, mm -hmm. what polls seem to indicate is what it is a slip towards yeah. Trump. Yeah, it's really important that you mentioned those states. And I was just in Nevada and Arizona on separate reporting trips, and Republicans are feeling very confident are. In, in those mm -hmm. two states. Um, we are one week away, if you can believe it, from the first presidential debate where we will see Biden go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Trump. Um, I want to play a little bit, kind of tying in the economic angle a little bit, um, of what Gene Sperling told our Major Garrett uh, earlier this week. And I'll be honest, yeah, if you want to say you feel he's old, if you want to f say he seems a little more stiff physically, you go ahead. But if you say this guy is not up to the job, that he is not understanding all these difficult issues and able to perform uh, with full strength, then I have to say you don't know what you're talking about. So earlier in the um, show, we were talking about kind of the strategy heading into this. But I'm curious from your reporting, how much is the Biden team focused on kind of appearances during this debate? Yeah, I, I think the Biden campaign recognizes that this debate is a huge moment to uh, reassure Americans that the president is up for the for the job. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the president's age um, has been an issue that has been following this campaign around since the very start. Mm -hmm. They know that they need to um, really uh, make Americans feel a bit more confident in the president mm -hmm. um, when it comes to his age. So yeah. that's a major, major focus um, uh, that mm -hmm. they are going to have in their debate prep this week. And obviously, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's there's a lot of unknowns in how a debate can go, right? You can mm -hmm. prep for your uh, responses to the president, but mm -hmm. uh, the appearance part of it is is a bit more tricky. Um, a lot of it is mm -hmm. going to be how he responds to Trump in the moment. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I think yeah. The, uh, the campaign has uh, always said that this is 
this is going to be the time to drag Donald Trump into Americans' mm -hmm. living rooms. Mm -hmm. They feel like, um, you know, the country mm -hmm. hasn't really been paying attention to all the things that yeah. Trump has said that they view as problematic. Yeah. Uh, and so they think that this is the moment um, that really we could see mm -hmm. a turning point in, in this campaign. Yeah, and, and Josh, I mean, we we're also going to see the Biden team really focus on policy, right, and kind of use this as a platform to remind voters what they're doing as president. Um, and, you know, we see poll after poll, the economy, of course, top of mind for people. We see the economy looking one way on paper, but voters that we all talk to say, tell us time and time again, they're not really feeling it. In your reporting, what is the administration doing to kind of um, you know, prepare for that argument and, and kind of move their, you know, ways to address things like inflation and rising costs of things and, and, and all of that. Yeah, they've been ramping up a bit of an inflation push because the data have been kind of coming a little bit in their favor. And one thing that mm -hmm. Biden has been hoping for is that interest rates will start falling. Mm -hmm. He's been talking about, yeah. th about this a bit, not so much lately. Mm -hmm. It hasn't happened yet. The Fed is sort of staying put for now. This morning, Lael Brainerd gave a speech talking about, hey, you know what, grocery prices, prices some of them, are actually coming down, not just slowing the rate of increase, but falling. Mm. Uh, Council of Economic Advisors also put out a report. They seem to be hanging their hat on that, mm. that, hey, we're actually starting to see some relief on that. Will we get credit for it? Now, of course, the issue is that grocery prices have been jumping up substantially for yeah. a long time. A couple months of falling, they're still well above what they were four years ago, so they're not yeah. getting a lot of credit. Broadly, the reason we're having a debate this early is because the Biden administration mm -hmm asked for it, and mm. uh, Trump either agreed or called their bluff or however you want to view it. Yeah. But they want this to be a referendum on Trump. Trump mm -hmm. wants it to be a referendum on Biden, and that's mm -hmm. why we're going to see them on the stage next week's, what mm -hmm. sees, seems like very early in the process, of course, earlier than in 2020. It does, and we will stay tuned to your reporting as well. Um, uh, Lauren and Josh, thank you very thank much you. for being here. We appreciate it.